Good evening once again. It's Friday evening at 10.30 p.m. And we are here tonight once again with Hold No Bars, your favorite Friday evening television program. Tonight on Hold No Bars, we're going to speak about the issue of the no confidence motion, which last Friday we spoke about because our program last Friday was just a few hours after that no confidence motion was passed in our National Assembly. And we mentioned it about the issue of the National Assembly honoring a convicted terrorist. Whether we like it or not, regardless of what contributions were made, you ended as a convicted terrorist. And the National Assembly passing a motion honoring the Member of Parliament, Abdul Qadir, um, certainly would have caused eyebrows, and it did. It did. It was swiftly condemned by the United States, where Mr. Kadir was incarcerated, where he was tried and convicted for ter um, terrorism. And uh, our National Assembly passed that particular motion. As Miss Valerie Patterson Yearwood moved the motion, um, we heard all kinds of excuses being made about this motion. First, Valerie Patterson it is said that Minister Amna Ali gave her the motion to introduce, and she did. And then we heard that it was the clerk, Mr. Sherlock Isaacs, the clerk of the National Assembly, Mr. Sherlock Isaacs. Um, he said, well, he drafted the motion. And um, and he wrote a letter in the press saying that he did draft the motion. The clerk will advise on a correct format and may even do the physical typing and or drafting of the letter, but in the end, it's the person who puts the name to the motion. And if I get before me a motion which I have reservations about, I wouldn't care who drafted it, who instructed me. If I feel strongly about it, then I go my conscience, like Sharon Das did, and I would not proceed with it. Let someone else move the motion. Let someone else um, put their name to it. So this excuse we're hearing about, it was the clerk who drafted the motion. Come on. Many times, people would get their secretaries to draft letters. But when something goes wrong, you can't say it's the secretary who drafted the letter. It's your responsibility to sign off on the letter. And the moment you put your John Hancock, your signatory, your signature onto that letter, then you own it. It's yours. It's yours. So, Mr. Sherlock Isaacs, I was very shocked when I read that letter from the clerk of the National Assembly, Mr. Sherlock Isaacs, saying that he drafted the letter. So what, Sherlock? It's not the first time you have advised on the correct format and recommend wordings. But you are not the person whose name is attached to and who is moving the motion. And the clerks are there to guide, to offer guidance, to offer advice on the correct way to move motions, on the correct way to um, conduct yourself in the National Assembly. So if Sherlock is now the person who is responsible for drafting that letter and putting it to Minister Valerie Patterson Haywood, 
Then, remember that was the same Sherlock Isaacs who signed off on the no confidence motion too? Anyway, that's another story. But we see ministers of the government and the government as a whole because it's collective responsibility of the cabinet. We see blunder after blunder. We see lack of compassion after lack of compassion. We see total disregard for convention, for norms, for decency, for democracy in this government, you know. So if Ms. Patterson Haywood will say that wasn't her motion, then somehow she should move another motion in Parliament and get her name struck off of it, right? Even if it's not allowed, put another motion to get your name struck off. It's like when <coughs> Minister Nicola Henry um, described um, Pagwa as Diwali, right? The minister is the minister's speech. We have speech writers, we have public relation officers, we have experts on all aspects of culture. But in the end, I am responsible for whatever comes under my name. So when a draft speech comes before me and I read it, I have to be conscious about my environment, about the areas which I'm supposed to be minister of. So I can't make a mistake like calling Pagwa Diwali. And then saying, well, I'm, a, I'm not a Hindu, so it doesn't really matter. Every little child knows about these different holidays. My six-year-old grandson uh, would, say, would say, are you a Muslim? I'm a Hindu. And by the way, let me say uh, Mubarak Ramadan in advance to all of the persons who um, would be up. The Muslim community, by the way, as a whole, would be observing the holy month of Ramadan, which most likely begins on Monday. So next week, yes, we're going to be here. I had to put a previous, uh, another program that I do on hold for the month. Uh, but next week, yes, by the time uh, the extra acts of devotion, worship, are done, um, we could do the program. So hold no bars would not be inconvenienced by the um, the extra acts of worship Muslims would do. And while our audience may dip a bit because we would tend to go in a bit earlier, um, let me say that we will continue with hold no bars during the month of Ramadan. So coming back now to the issue of owning up to the stupidness, the nonsense, the, um, the lack of diplomacy displayed by the administration, there is no excuse. I do another program, and before I do, um, I go on that the air on Tuesdays during the day, I normally would take, around, take a walk around the block, in a city block. And generally, I'm always every day in the center of the city. And um, what was said by one person, this motion is a stain on our nation, which we can't ever erase. And I think that person, ordinary person, described it better than most people. So we had total condemn condemnation from the Americans, the British, the Canadian, the European community is now called the ABCE, right? The diplomatic community, ABCE. And let's hear your views on that motion which was passed in the National Assembly and how you feel it will impact upon us. We also want to speak about the continued challenges which PPPC election commissioners have at GCOM and the issue there is 
the three government commissioners along with the president appointed <laughs> chairman have all been siding one way and for the past 10, 11 meetings, the PPPC commission, commissioners have had to walk out. And in four weeks time, they're saying that registration will begin. So we can speak about registration also. And um, as I'm on the program, I'll be preparing for Ramadan, we wanna say congratulations to um, Irfan Ali, the Honorable Member, former Minister, and Arya, his wife, the arrival of their brand new baby boy, Said. Let's take a short break and we're going to be back right away. Another big holiday weekend uh, when you speak to your family and friends and acquaintances overseas, they say Guyana is on one big uh, party, it's holiday after holiday. We had just a long Easter weekend, a week and a half, two weeks, two weekends ago. And this weekend is another big one, it's arrival day weekend, it's on Sunday. And I want to speak a little bit about the arrival day. It is not, it is not Indian Arrival Day. On May the 5th, the first Indians arrived in the country. On May the 5th. Then they landed at Plantation Highbury on the east bank of Burmese. And what, when we had looked at a holiday for all peoples who came, we said, let this be arrival day for all who came. Yes, it happened to happen. It happened to fall on May 5th. But there was this big movement to have May 5th designated Indian arrival day. And there was a similar kind of situation in America years ago when there was a movement to have a holiday in honor of Martin Luther King. And... Um, and I think it was decided in the end to have a general holiday, right? To honor all people who strove to build democracy and respect for human rights and civil rights in the United States. So we have now arrival day and it's going to be a big weekend. Uh, a big event is planned for Albion by the Indian Arrival Committee. At Everest Cricket Ground, you just saw that ad, there will be a duck curry competition and a cultural program and um, it's free and anyone could attend starts at 3 p.m. so let's get to the telephones get to your calls and um, and start getting your views on that motion in Parliament also your views on the preparation for registration and also any other comment that you may have at this particular time. Yes, we have a new sign in, 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 in front of me, and that suggestion comes all the way from the UK, and um, the person who says uh, to put that sign up to remind people to turn their TV down because it is annoying to get the feedback. So the audience is all over the world, especially where the diaspora reside. So, um, let's give some consideration to those who are listening and who want to hear what you have to say, in particular, what you have to say. So here we go, um, the lines are now open. We have 6819312, that's the cell phone. And on there you have the other two number, 2332. 459 and the 5010617. Well, so what are your plans But for this weekend, but more particularly, how do you feel um, about this motion honoring a
convicted terrorist. This motion by the National Assembly honoring a convicted terrorist. And I remind that we had so many persons making excuses, the minister, the government, saying it was no big deal on social media. Quite a few persons was blaming the diplomatic community for, um, as they say, for spreading this thing all over the world, um, the diplomatic community. But that's the people's job. The first world, the white first world, is very angry, and I should even say white first world, no, it's everybody, because look what happened in Sri Lanka and so forth. I'm not going to make no excuse for um, terrorist Muslims, you know, none whatsoever, but a lot of fear exists with respect to um, these cowards, and we can't say animals. Animals could be very loving, but it, it got to be cowards. Can't be anything but cowards, right? Who do that? Uh, well, I was going to talk about the difference between a terrorist and a guerrilla. A person fighting a government is a guerrilla. They, they carry their war against this the forces of the state. A terrorist don't have respect for anyone, but uh, they do whatever they want to suit their end. To suit their end, not to achieve their end, to suit their end. I'm very, very upset about that particular issue. Um, and so this motion in Parliament that was passed has put a big, big stain on our nation. I wonder how persons who support the government feel. The other issue that which I found very um, interesting was the silence with respect to the Working People's Alliance on the motion. In fact, they supported it. And the silence with respect to the AFC, the Alliance for Change. And you also have three other parties, the Ghana Action Party, the Justice for All Party, and the National Front Alliance. So there are three alliances in this APNO AFC coalition. National Front Alliance, Alliance for Change, and the Working People's Alliance. But very vocal people have always been, as they say, Paper Tigers, the Working People's Alliance. And the Alliance for Change um, came with all the glorious ideals and promises. But they voted for the National Assembly honoring a convicted terrorist. So let's hear your views on that one and any other issue that you may have at this time. Must be the rain this evening because it's been a very quiet uh, period so far and we've already gone almost 20 minutes into the program without a call. So the motion passed by the National Assembly. An update on the Elections Commission. Now what has been happening there? By a vote of four to three, earlier this year, just while the no confidence motion was effective, effective, that's before that infamous ruling by the Appeal Court of Guyana, um, before that Appeal Court decision, the no confidence motion was live it had teeth, it had um, merit, it had enforceability, right? So before that, it was, we must have elections. The Elections Commission, instead of 
from December 22nd start preparing to give our nation an elections before March the 22nd, they, they started their delaying tactics. First, the chairman got sick and he was on medical leave until the end of January, first week of February. When he turned out, the PNC started speaking about house-to-house -house registration. Not registration. And these are some things that we have to be very cognizant about, aware of registration and house-to-house -house registration. House-to-house -house registration is just a form of registration. The other form that is applicable is continuous registration. Continuous registration happened since eight, ten years ago when we had the last ID card. And when we had the last ID card, that's what, what I call the three-picture ID card, when we had that registration, we subsequently had 10 continuous registration exercises, 10 or 11. But as soon as a list is going to be expired, you see uh, claims and object, uh, well, before claims, you see the publishing of a preliminary list of electors. And that preliminary list of electors is used um, publicize and then that is used for people to go and examine it and people get a call to come out and registration. So there may be, I think it's about a six week period for whoever was not registered before to come and put their name on the National Register of Registrants, right? Those persons would include youths who have attained the age of 14 since the last continuous registration exercise. Hi, good evening. Go ahead. Hey, good evening. I want to know the the administration. Uh huh. Go ahead. When um. Then they had no confidence motion against him. Right. Now they had election in, in three months. Mm -hmm. Why they can't have it in three months now? Okay, we'll address that, right? Okay, let me finish up this issue of continuous registration versus house to house registration. So, with respect to the continuous registration, a list is published based on the National Register of Registrants. So, everyone who is 18 years of age at a particular day, qualifying date, comes on the list. And then that list is used, people can peruse it, and if your name is not on it, you have an opportunity to go and get registered. And that period might take six months, sorry, six weeks. And then after that, a, another list comes out, and you get an opportunity to make a claim. Let's say I went and registered and still my name is not on there. I can go and do the correction. So you have corrections, you have objections by people who have died and you have um, a claim against um, a name that shouldn't be on the list, right? Let's say I know Vasquez Manuel de Nobrega name appear on the list at lot 15 um, James Street. And I know the person, but the person just came to the country and is a foreigner and shouldn't be on the list. So I can make an objection. So this is what a continuous registration period does. And you get an opportunity to put your name on. The PNC commissioners and the um, chairman voted for house-to-house -house registration. That is to scrap the list, scrap the ID card, 
and start all over again because the selling list is bloated. And this is one of the delaying tactics. The caller spoke about um, the Ramatar administration and parliament was dissolved. I think it was sometime, um, and we had elections in May, but the no confidence motion on the against the Ramatar administration was, I think, in November. We had elections um, in uh, May. So, yes, this thing could be done to the caller. It could be done. It was done much faster than this. But the thing is that people, the government just don't want, the people just don't want to test their popularity they don't want to test their support in the court of public opinion that is among you, the registered voters of the country. So they're trying all kinds of things not to proceed with any elections, including the court. And so um, we had uh, a reversal of the chief justices. We had a reversal of the chief justices um, support for the no confidence motion. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Sorry. Two persons got cut off. Yeah. So we, by the appeal court, and um, that is now coming up shortly. We're in May, and the Caribbean Court of Justice will be hearing these cases from the 8th of May. 8, 9, and 10. I think there is a case of, hi, good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Nadir. Go, good evening, hold no bars. Good, good, good. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first, I must say, um, concerning the, the Abdul Qadir. Go ahead. I think um, it should have been passed in the Congress League and not the Parliament. Mm -hmm. Because Although he was a member for the mm -hmm. I think I think he worked for the different country, and I think that's the part and the corporate thing, and not the environment. Because the reason why um, they have him as a tech. Yes. And it reflects very dark on the government. Mm -hmm. That what what transpired in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So I think that. They don't. They, they do something that should have been done. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the person says, yes, if he was a great party supporter, you want to honor him, but don't drag the whole country along with you. Want to honor him within the sacred walls of your party, your group? Go ahead, but don't bring the whole country along with you to be seen as a terrorist country. In fact. Um, one person who was monitoring the releases from all over the world, whether it was Africa, Europe, North America, the condemnation was all over. Oh, the one person just um, messaging on WhatsApp want to talk about the Minister of Public Security says that um, Crime in Guyana is not that bad, right? So if you want to talk about crime, you can talk about that too, right? But hold no bars. Let us hear what your views are. It could be contrary to mine. Okay, it could be. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, when I, when I saw her. Good evening. When I, good evening. I have enough problems, sir. I can make a donation concerning with the local government, the mayor, right? Mm -hmm. In front of where I live in, some people are littering, chewing, drink bar, uh -huh. food, boxes, um, a sort of man of where, where is that you're living? 302 East Roselle Circle Square. Self help square. Yeah. Uh -huh. When I move in this area, this is a dump site, right, sir? Mm -hmm. front, front and back. And I clean it up, right? When I clean it up, everybody like go on, like how the place looking. But at the same time, 
Okay, thanks. I'm sure they will hear you. Okay, so we're having an issue um, when we try to answer the calls. It's cutting off. But Mayor Ubraj, Colleen Samson. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Hold no bars. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. So, um, person uh, not worried about the international community because the city, they know what this government does and is. The garbage, may Obraj, while um, self help scheme. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening. Um. I don't, I just got your program. I don't know what the topic is about, but um, I want I got uh, something to say. Um, when the next government go in power, mm -hmm. when the next government go in, mm -hmm. I would not like them to um take a good look of what going on at public hospital for a day. It ram pack mm -hmm. vehicles. It has higher care. It has private care. Mm -hmm. you, if you have a sick patient in your vehicle and you're going to that hospital, mm -hmm. if the patient got the 10 minutes more to live, mm -hmm. it's going to take you about 15 minutes to go through that passage to mm -hmm. go, go through that track. Now, is These that... higher cars Go ahead. Need to pull apart somewhere, sit somewhere and put all of them. Mm -hmm. And they could just put up a signboard uh, in front of public hospitals. So those persons who want taxi, mm -hmm. they just dial them and they come and pick them up. Mm -hmm. The place is in a deplorable condition, the vehicle there like I today I went there, I want to know if it's a madhouse. Uh oh. You don't have nowhere to park and you want to go into the hospital. Okay, I just want to get clearly which entrance. Is it the East Street entrance? The entrance right in front of the hospital. Right. In front of the hospital. Not the emergency in Newmarket Street. It's the East Street entrance, right? I'm talking, listen. The, when, you, when, you going in, when you're going in from okay, the road, I think, it, yes. in front there I'm talking about, direct. Okay, in good. In front of the hospital, both sides. Okay, thanks. Okay, very good point um, in terms of the sick people and the access to the entrance of the hospital. Hi, good evening. You're Hi, on the air. Here. Good evening. I'm constantly inquiring for water at me. What we come there all the hundreds of millions for the debt for the water at the inquiry. Mm -hmm. Can you get the final report the um, water at the debt? No, um, no final report revealed as yet. Over, over three to four hundred million dollars spent on an mm -hmm. inquiry. It's so the previous go the former government and this government. Okay. No, don't know about that. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Colin from Eccles here. Yes, Eccles. Uh, since Brother B answered that you come up to live here. Uh, since this government government, the name Clean is draining. Mm -hmm. Do you see how much it will bite you? Non mm -hmm. the cook the 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 uh -huh. so, you know, and the you right. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of foreigners are come back here because they were from Cuba and all the place. You got the harassment by the police to you know when they cross them to drive outside. Mm -hmm. And you slip up it, they will carry a lock you up and all things to wherever the people are. Okay. So, okay. I don't know what to say. Yeah. But our counselors at the 
at Eccles, while drainage and irrigation may have the responsibility, man, come on, you still got to give us in Eccles some representation, right? Don't say it's not our responsibility. It's our NDC. So you make the representation for us. That what is within your duty and right. Yes, you control it, do it. That which is higher up, you have a right, a duty, you have a responsibility to make the representation for us, right? So I'm backing you, caller, but let our chairman and all the councillors and the PPPC want this area handsomely at the local government elections. We can't fail our people. If we can't give answers and representation at this level, come on, it's not going to help us at the higher level. But I want to come back to the public hospital and the access. You know, I remember when President Jack Dale was um, living at State House. And every time he has to come out and travel north along Carmichael Street, the entire area between Lamaha Street and Newmarket Street on both sides of Carmichael Street used to be crowded, blocked up. At the banks, post office, um, and the spillover from Woodlands Hospital. So he stationed a police person there, right? Just to make sure there's law and order. He was criticized for it. This government come in, and many times you don't see only one, you see two and three traffic cops. So the same way we will do that to protect our president, let us get that same kind of service at the hospital. It is even more important there. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hey, dear. Oh, no bars. Hi, Go ahead. How are you? Quite well. And yourself? Okay, thank you. My concern is about crime mm -hmm. and the behavior of politicians. Go ahead. No, I'm a grown man. Mm -hmm. And from age 18, I've been serving military and paramilitary. I don't know a job security. Mm -hmm. No, I have zero tolerance where crime is concerned. Mm -hmm. But we need to be realistic enough to understand crime will happen at all times. Right. What we have to try to do is to curtail it. And, you know, nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the time. Mm -hmm. And these criminals are going to get at your home or strike at your business place. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, ever so often, people are falling victim. Now we have your aspect of crime. Now the thing about the politicians, mm -hmm. they need to stop getting at each other throat. Mm -hmm. For example, wherever you have a good policy, mm -hmm. and then you will have uh, last election, mm -hmm. as long as the policy was a good one, then the new government should continue with the same policy because it was good, for example. Um, PVP has embarked on a massive housing drive program, mm -hmm. and the government now continues with it. Mm -hmm. What I don't like about politicians, they don't give credit to the previous administration for the good things they have done. All politicians, mm -hmm. when they're in opposition, they just keep getting at each other because it's not good for a country. For example, like the current situation, I think both government and the opposition need to see eye and eye and eye on that and need to put heads and heart and hand together and try to deal with this situation instead of being this stadium because it would not help our country, it's not help the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that is my comment. Great. Uh, sincere plea for the politicians to have a workable policy and program that they each support so that we can provide service and protection and a secure environment for our citizens. Thanks a lot, caller. Thanks a lot. Um, and when you say you politicians, remember I'm included in that too. So I hear you and something we have to, to work with and for. The hospital I was speaking about, that, that caller, um, the police should take control of that particular area, that junction. Yes, it's a mess. And um, just as they do a pretty decent job in the mornings, and they come out and help control the traffic, when that shift is done, it's relaxed time. 
But we heard that the Commission of Police uh, said we have over a thousand new recruits in the last couple of years on the road. May st it may still not be sufficient. Um, priority areas must be looked after. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars. Go ahead. Good man. So, concern about crime, again, the government is putting up even more surveillance cameras around the city in particular. So I don't know what is going to happen if it's more cameras we need or we need the talent to get the expertise and the equipment to be able to identify the perpetrators. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Go ahead. If you have a license for your own, mm -hmm. and you didn't charge them, and you see a robbery, you got to turn your face. You cannot assist the person to get a robbery. Not right. anymore. Your license for your own is taken away. Not anymore, right? Right now. Yeah. And the robbery there, heavy, in charge them, and nobody can assist nobody. Because mm -hmm. the person went and helped the person to be locked up and charged. And the crime legalizing Joshua right now. Okay. Okay. So I know what he's talking about. Um, Carl, I know what you're speaking about. That incident with the young lady when two licensed firearm owners went to um, her rescue. The bandits did get away, but the two firearm holders, uh, their guns were um, seized. I want to say seized. And they were now being. Um, investigated so they look like the criminals and the criminal run free but I was speaking a bit about these cameras going up we have today more footage than we ever ever had from private people from businesses when crime is happening but we still can't use those images or we failing to use those images and try and track down these perpetrators. And there are so many, if you look at investigation ID, real crime situation in, you go on YouTube and just type in crime or on the TV or on the internet and you will see, you know, sometimes a tattoo mark, you know. I remember when Mr. Brass down the road, people went in and, and um, Burglarize this place. We saw the car with the with the um, stick on, all kinds of stuff. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars. Yeah. You're on the air. Night time. Um, good evening. What the, 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 in regard to the crime and the surveillance footage and all these things, we got to acknowledge that um, in the state of Italy, police force have elements that are very highly corrupt. You know these the, these these criminals and. It was just a turn of line like this because they have some motive repetitions. We need to understand that. We need the police force to cleanse it. Okay, so one view, but at the same time, we can't throw away the baby with the bath water. Um, we have overwhelming amount of good people in the force. Many times they don't get an opportunity to um, put their ideas, put their um, programs in place to fight crime, to control crime, and to deter crime. Good? Yes. Um, a lot of soul searching is not easy, but we're going to get, you know, I always say that the richer we get, we're going to have more and more crime. Because you're always going to have people who want to take what hard-working, decent, honest people have from them. So you'll always have that. So what are we going to do 
what is going to be the plan to catch those people who will engage in that kind of behavior. That's first of all. You got to catch them. You got to successfully prosecute them. You got to put them away. That's one. What are we going to do to instill different values in our people so we don't do these things in the first place? All right? That's another issue. Longer term, behavior change, um, and a whole list of other things go with that. But we are here right now. And what people want is reducing crime by catching the criminals, successfully prosecuting them or putting them away. And even if we can, we know who it is, we can not prove it, let's put a tail on them 24 hours a day. Yeah, put a watchman on them. They can't sneeze, they can't breathe, you know. And the brutality of the murders, Two weeks ago, we spoke about it. We spoke about it two weeks ago. And since we spoke about it, there's a killing in our boys' town. Nalo, our sympathies out to the family there. There is one in Parika. I think a few days ago, too, in Parika. Okay, there's a sign here saying, and thanks to the young man from England, right? You know. So not only are we going to say what the policy is, we're going to enforce the policy. Once you call and I get that noise, you're getting cut off, right? Good. So thank you, young man from the UK. So I don't just want to put it up to pamper that with it, but we're going to put it into effect. Not only put it up, but put it into effect. Good. We have, what, just 10 minutes remaining on the program. Let's see if we can get through quite a few more callers before the evening is out. Okay, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah. Good night. Good evening. Yeah. I put in for a house flat. This is 2019. And I can't get you up to now. You called two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I can't get up. I got 19. I still live in Florida downstairs up to now. Mm-hmm. I can't get up. Okay, Paul, listen. I, I can't do much about it. There is a new minister um, uh, responsible for housing, uh, a more proactive minister. Let me give a minister, Alan Ferguson, some kudos there than the previous one. Um, and the pres. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hey, good evening, Mr. Manager. Good evening. As much as we have a crime book, I think we put, we still have a minister who is lying and do not ever try to do anything. This minister we have, we know he got a car. We know he got a eye that a signal in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But I know his mind is not signal in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that this minister we have, mm -hmm. who is a minister mm -hmm. who is supposed to look after the rights of the people of this country, mm -hmm. he does rest it back and allow all these crime people dying, bandits coming through, and he hasn't coming out on non-media to see what is happening. And I think it's time now. Time is going, time is coming. I think it is time for this minister either to completely relax, evade his position, and allow somebody who can deal with it. Let, let me ask you this, right? Just before I came here, that minister you're speaking about implied that he has done such a good job, he is going to put himself up to be the prime ministerial candidate. How do you feel? Mr. Manzur, let me tell you something. This man I call Brack. This guy name is Brack. Yeah, I know Brack. I know this man so well. Mm -hmm. And this man has never done anything to the people mm -hmm. in this country properly. This man is just relaxing okay. and focused on, 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 on the people of this country. Thanks. Money. Okay. So, okay. So, we, you mentioned that before. But, you know, a lot of the, I would say the overwhelming majority of Guyanese people feel that Moses Nagamutu, that's all he does is relax. So, maybe if practice. The Minister of Public Security is relaxing. He wants a higher job so he could relax more. 
Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Go ahead. Uh -huh. I would like to congratulate the current government on such a wonderful job they're doing. For example, Go ahead. nice rusty water. No road maintenance is deplorable. The black holes and all the four corners that all the robbers can make their living. Not forgetting even your cones and cattle that are stolen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, a very facetious scholar congratulating the government and all the neglect. Great. So, yes, um, let's hear your views. We started with Abdul Qadir. We'll take a short break and come back with the last few minutes of Whole No Bars, the first program for May 2019. Another holiday weekend um, is upon us and um, lots of activities around the country for the, for the weekend. It's arrival day weekend and we're fortunate this year because it's falling on a Sunday so those who don't work on Saturdays, you have Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And if you're considering things to do well, you just saw one ad there. Tonight, hold no bars spoke about the no confidence motion, we spoke about crime, we also spoke about registration. And we will continue on these topics because these are some of the more important ones that impact upon your standard of living and the good life which was promised to all of us. May is very important. Yes, Independence is the 26th of May, another holiday coming up, but more particularly, it's the Caribbean Court of Justice in a few days' time to hear the petitions um, with respect to the no-confidence vote. Hi, good evening. You're on the air with Hold No Bars. Uh, yeah, good evening. Mr. Good evening. Yeah, I'm calling to, you know, the, the thing with the terrorists, thing with our country. Mm -hmm. It is such a shame that <clears throat> we are so embarrassed about this thing. And, um, you know, our, our father of the nation should really take before we do things. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you know, I, I put my hand on more scrutiny, like if you live in the country or you're going anywhere, there's no pressure on us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. another thing I would like to say is about the um, We don't have that type of drug in this country. Like if you have a fungal infection in the eye, there is no antifungal eye drop in this country. If you uh, need certain type of drug, like is it is it not in the country or is it not at the hospitals, the public hospitals? No, it's not at the public hospital and it is not in the country because when you go with your prescription, mm -hmm. they tell you we cannot bring this into the country. Ah. And so I'll have a list that they bring stuff in. Okay. Fungal eye drop is not on the list. If you eventually you have a bacterial infection, you have a fungal infection, mm -hmm. you could go blind with it because there is no, no you cannot get treatment. Okay. You can't even bring it in. It's, okay. It's, it's restriction to all the medications, sort of thing you can't get because it's not at antimatters. Well, Minister Lawrence and Minister um, Karen Cummings have done a great job. So they've done such a good job that Minister Lawrence alone now can manage the Ministry of Health. And um, Minister Cummings has been promoted to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So they got to know. They got to know that people need people need a drug rather than Panadol or whatever they got at the hospital there. Yeah, and thanks. We need even we, we even need like better doctors in the country. Well, thanks a lot. I'm going to have to cut you off now because we are okay, running down. Okay, thank you. You have a thanks for coming. Okay. You too. Okay, so perhaps we could take one caller. We have just about a hard twenty seconds remaining on the program tonight. The program of May the. Third, hold no bars. So we're already past almost two months on hold no bars. Good. So that caller didn't come through and operator is saying we can start winding down to the 10.30 hour. But tonight, it's been a 
not a very interesting program and quite a few very strong views. Okay, you have 15 seconds. Go ahead. Okay, I want to say to you, Mr. Nadir, you reported for the past many years. I always respect that by your fault for all things, right? And one thing is able to manage. Whenever you manage your program, I want to pay attention. Please. Go ahead. Keep your program healthy. All things. Keep it healthy. Mm -hmm. Like tonight, of course. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, I joined the program late. I know what I've done by earlier, but keep it healthy. Just do that for us. Thank you. Okay, keeping it healthy. Let me say thanks on behalf of Kevin, all the directors of MTV, all of you who support the program, and on my own behalf, thanks for watching and for calling in, for being part of our Friday evening once again. Again, to all the Muslims, the Muslim community in our entire country, Ramadan Mubarak, in a couple of days, we're going to be starting the holy month, and Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. You have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you very much.